Hello everyone and welcome to the 26th episode of Career Podcast Fame. I'm joined with Sara Navish. Navish? Sorry if I mispronounced it. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> She's a 2D animator and freelance illustrator from Portugal. And with that added away, give us a little introduction on how we got into visual arts and design. Um, well, um, that was the first question, actually. Like, give us a little introduction on how we got into visual arts and design. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here, Hamtin. Thank you. Um, how I first got into it? Uh, well, uh, since I can remember that I used to love cartoons <laughs> for once, and I used to draw also uh, just from when I was a baby. Uh, that's. Uh, something that uh, I did uh, all the time and uh, I guess it's still my better way of expression so I started like a kid who loved to drawing but never stopped it <laughs> some kids I guess all kids like to draw but I never stopped it and I wanted uh, more than anything to see them come to life so I guess the next step up was to animate them <laughs> animate my drawing so that's how it started very early with a lot of enthusiasm and uh well, a lot of, a lot of experimentation, a uh, lot of cartoon observing, like step-by-step uh, step on movies, uh, Disney movies, uh, Pixar movies, uh, the ones that we know best, <laughs> anime also. Uh, and from then on to smaller studios, to more specific styles and uh, more profound research in the animation industry in the whole world, so in Europe, uh, etc., etc. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, it probably was like you said that you that all the kids would like to draw and you just never stopped. And I guess um, a lot of your friends probably or teachers said, you know, you can't make money with animation or illustration, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And now you're working as an artist the whole time. So, yeah. <laughs> actually, I, mean, uh, I didn't get that uh, feedback. Uh, oh. I actually remember... Uh, and uh, I found out later on that uh, a lot of uh, my friends in the industry has uh, had a similar uh, ex experience, which was I used to be the the kid that draw, <laughs> the kid that drew in school. Uh, and uh, when there, whenever there was a, a little uh, task for us to do that uh, included drawing, everyone looked at me instantly like I was the one to do it. <laughs> uh, I found out later that a lot of my friends who animate today also had that experience. Uh, I, I guess I had a lot of encouragement in school. Uh, people liked my drawings. My, the kids liked uh, seeing them. They asked me for drawings. Also, even older kids asked me to draw anime pictures <laughs> for them. And uh, also my parents uh, have always been extremely supportive. They're uh, very cultured people. They always uh, supported art in general, uh, writing, uh, painting, uh, sculpting, and the animations as part of it. So actually, it started with them. Uh, uh, my knowledge of uh, producers and directors in Portugal uh, started with them. They're the ones who told me, look, this guy is the one who directed this film. <laughs> so it started early and with a lot of encouragement. I cannot complain about that at all. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. And... <laughs> Were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path? When I started uh, drawing, um, it's funny, I actually went straight into cartoon drawing. I mean, uh, uh, my I guess uh, a kid's tendency uh, in drawing is to represent uh, different things with the uh, with the, the same kind of drawing, like a tree will always have a, a straight trunk, brown trunk, and then a puffy, uh, bushy, uh, green top, uh, round top. Uh, that's a re representation of every tree uh, for them, I guess. Uh, I started uh, like that, and I never went on to more realistic things. I started cartoony things right away, and uh, I guess I had a lot of... Um, references of cartoons to support my uh, creativity so it was only later when I went into school and then that was uh, art school yes uh, I started uh, drawing a uh, uh, background, the scenery, uh, try to represent uh, realistic uh, content and uh, shapes uh, and human figure uh, so I started cartoon, then I tried uh, a more serious, uh, realistic approach in arts university. Uh, and then 
I focused in cartoon again because uh, I guess I knew from the beginning that I wanted to make cartoons. And uh, this comes from a very personal place, actually, because uh, when I used to watch cartoons as a girl, I remember living them uh, so intensely. I learned from them. I lived them a lot. I experienced feelings with them a lot. And I guess I grew up with the idea that it would be amazing to do the same for other people and for other kids, uh, to make them live. Uh, the images, the, the ideas, the, the movement, uh, the way I did when I was a kid. All right. And um, how, oh, sorry. What is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. My experience from what, sorry? Uh, your experience from the start of it until now. I'm sorry, Hunting, can you please... Uh, yes, repeat? yes, uh, sure, sure. Um, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. I, uh, at the moment, I'm focusing on uh, um, Portuguese animation industry. Uh, it's not very big at the moment. It's growing and it's consistently growing. Uh, but it's it consists on short films most of the time, and that means that I am constantly moving from one project to the other. And one very strong characteristic of Portuguese uh, film industry, animation industry, is that it's uh, the work of authors. It's their visions, artistic visions, uh, many times, very often. And uh, that means that the style varies a lot. So in every film that I work, I have to. There is a phase in which I need to adapt to the style. Sometimes it's more realistic. Sometimes it's more cartoony. Uh, my personal, my personal drawing style is uh, more cartoony. Uh, but uh, I have no problem in trying more uh, realistic approach when uh, the opportunity arises. Uh, I, I actually, I, I guess it's, um, it's a good part of uh, my work that it's very versatile. All right. And uh, how does your design process usually go um, anytime you want to start working on a project, design project? It depends. If I'm working, for example, uh, if I need to adapt to uh, another project, which means that uh, the artistic uh, direction will be uh, led by someone else uh, and by someone else's style, I usually need uh, a few uh, well, a few weeks to uh, work around the style and uh, experiment those shapes and uh, try on that uh, line style also so uh, i need to adapt to the to the drawing of the author the original author uh, either the drawing or the painting uh, it depends on the film when i'm working on my own project and uh, i wish to direct a film someday uh, i usually need to start uh, exploring a look that goes along with the idea that I want to uh, express. Uh, for example, if it's a serious idea, I'll probably look for more... I've had, I've had a few projects on my hands, uh, uh, some that I uh, may develop later, others that are in current development. And uh, if, I have, uh, if I'm looking for a more serious approach on uh, feelings, for example, and if my film is about feelings, uh, I try to look for a more sensible, um, modest and uh, uh, kind of look uh, with uh, sober colors, uh, not too bright, uh, not too shiny. Uh, the shapes cannot be too, um, too basic either. Uh, the line cannot be too simple. It can be sketchy. It can be a little bit messy. It can be a little bit sketchy. It's even good. Uh, so I guess it depends on the nature of the project. Uh, I've had to... Uh, for example, I have a, a project that uh, I'm currently developing, and that one uh, uh, has a more cartoony uh, look to it. Uh, it's something that I like to explore. It's the style that I chose to uh, conti to give some continuance to that uh, uh, to, to to one part of my work. But uh, when I start a new project, I always have to go through a phase of. Uh, 
researching the line work, the shapes, the colors, in order to uh, answer to a specific uh, idea. Depending on the idea, that style can vary a lot. So I guess, once again, that's usually, that varies a lot. All right, and uh, actually right now I want to talk a little bit about some of your artworks here. And I, I'm seeing your post about like your top nine of your 2020. And I can't just stop but to realize that I, I'm getting a lot, a lot of sense of like sort of um, Alice in the Wonderland kind of vibe in terms of like um, the abstract subjects of it and also a bit of like dark horror if i'm not mistaken <laughs> and uh by dark like i i don't know if it's if that's the right term by dark horror i mean you know um yeah i actually, I actually i know a lot of examples but i don't have them right now in my brain <laughs> but uh, but i think you get the point and um yeah could you tell us about 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 the subjects you chose the variety of it sure um, um uh, wow uh that's there's such a big variety of ideas in my head i can hardly keep up with myself <laughs> uh there's a lot to uh so much to try and explore there's one uh very uh there is one big characteristic in my work, which is that I like to experiment a lot, and I'm always looking to do something a little bit different than what I did before. Uh, not to say that I cannot keep up a style. Obviously, I can. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to work in the film industry. I mean, uh, every time I work in a film, uh, and if there is more than one or two animators working in that specific film, uh, we better be synchronized uh, in terms of style. So uh, we need to adapt and we need to be consistent. So uh, obviously, I have that uh, ability. I had to work on that uh, through my life in the film industry. Uh, but uh, in my personal work, I tend to want to try always something different almost constantly so there will always be a little bit of yes darkness in some uh, in some parts of my work there will be a lot of cuteness also <laughs> i guess it's the same way that one has uh, phases of being very enthusiastic and phases of being down sometimes or sometimes i have more energy sometimes i have less i guess since my work and uh, my art uh, is a direct uh, reflex of what i feel and what i want to say uh, there will always be a bit of both, uh, and uh, not just both, just everything. There's a little bit of everything. Uh, maybe the tendency is the cuteness, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, that varies so much. It depends on how I feel. Uh, actually, one of the reasons why I chose to make a comic book was to keep one project consistent that I can always go back to, and uh, I guess that means that one of the things that I like to explore the most is the sense of humor. Uh, I love laughing. Uh, I, if I can make others not just laugh, but if, if, they, if I can only make them smile, then that's already enough to uh, make it a successful project. So uh, I guess the general tendency is for uh, positive feelings, even though I like to try a little bit of both. Sometimes when I'm angry about something, I just like to draw with darker colors. <laughs> Uh, so it varies. <laughs> yeah, that actually kind of makes sense because some of your artworks that are kind of like have a dark theme, you know, they also like represent kind of positivity in a negative environment, you know. So in a sense, you know, in the end, they're kind of positive too, if you think about it. Yes, I guess it can be almost like... A like a timeline of someone's life uh, if we check uh, artists uh, painters uh, line of work uh, we can see when it was that he got depressed when it was that he got married when it was that he got kids uh, that he had a family uh, it's uh, from the moment that we look at it as a way of expression it's inevitable that we will see the development of one's uh, life in it uh, so uh, it's, it's funny, it's like a graphic novel of my life. <laughs> Even if I didn't want to make it that way, it's uh, inevitably like that, yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, let's go to the next question. Who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Ooh, I, I know so many. It's, uh, it's a good question. I can tell of, uh, well... 
uh, again, since <clears throat> well, my inspiration comes from um, many different things. Uh, I can um, I can easily I, I can easily uh, be inspired by sculpture in the. And at the same time, be inspired by painting or even music. Uh, so I guess that uh, in different ways, I can get inspiration from many very different sources in time and in style. Uh, I can, I like to mention one in particular, actually. Uh, her name is Claire Wendling, and she's worked in uh, character design uh, for Disney projects and uh, other, uh, other films, not just animation, but also illustration. And uh, I guess she was the first artist that, uh, I, no, I don't guess, I am sure of this. She was the first artist that inspired me to move away from anime, which is a tendency that's very common to find in uh, kids that like to draw and start animating. Um, so she had a big impact on my style. It, it, she made uh, her work and observing her work made me want to loosen up a little bit and try a more expressive approach on the drawing and on sketching. Uh, she's, a, I guess, she's a key artist on my, uh, on my, um, in my, in my, well, development as an artist. Uh, there's also classic artists, uh, there's painters, illustrators. I like Egon Schiele a lot. I like Klimt, Gustav Klimt. Uh, so I can find uh, references in many different contests. Uh, I like, I love the sculptures of Ron Mueck. Uh, he does very realistic, uh, uh, very realistic uh, sculptures of uh, human beings and animals. And uh, they're very impressive. They're very uh, intense on expression. So uh, I can get inspired on the expression alone just by looking at his work. Um, and there are modern uh, artists. There are films that inspire me a lot, animation films. Uh, one of the studios that I like, whose work uh, I like the most, is uh, Cartoon Saloon, for example. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a it's a studio that's ha been having more and more impact since I uh, started studying animation and I've been accompanying it and. Uh, it's been an inspiration for many years now, so some references never go away. <laughs> All right, and speaking of anime, like of course there there sh there should have been some sort of inspiration and drive behind it for you to pursue that. But what are your favorite animes, or where are your favorite animes? My favorite animators. Um, no favorite anime anime series. You, I, ah, favorite anime. <laughs> oh. Mm. Well, I haven't been watching anime for a long time now. I had a few favorites when I was younger. I remember there was a channel called Locomotion. I was crazy about it. And uh, the day they took it out of the television program, I called everywhere to find out what happened. <laughs> uh, they used to be some of my favorite series. Uh, and one of them was Soul Hunter. That was my very favorite. Saber J to X, I loved it also. Evangelion is very, uh, very well known also. Uh, Blue Seed, uh, the four of these, they, they were the, the ones that I liked the most. Blue Seed, Soul Hunter, uh, Oh My Goddess, I liked it a lot also. <laughs> I found out about. Uh, I, have, I found out about uh, a lot of. Uh, actually, now that I'm talking about locomotion now. Locomotion was a very versatile sh channel. It had uh, not only anime uh, with some of my favorite anime series, but it also they also showed a lot of short films that inspired me to look more into European animation. Actually, it's funny because uh, that uh, channel was uh, most known for mostly known for its anime. But uh, some of my first contact with short films and uh, European, uh, British films, uh, German films. Uh, it was uh, there. Uh, short films uh, were not so common to appear on TV or in cinema. So there was a very special channel. I am actually surprised that they have took it out. <laughs> All right. And uh, tell us about your experience with animation. How did it begin for you? Were you like, where did you learn it from? And once suffers, you started with for animation basically everything about the whole journey uh i wanted to do animation since i watched locomotion actually since before i think 
since before I watched Locomotion, I loved the idea of making my drawings come to life and make them move. I used to spend hours watching uh, films step by step that uh, freaked out the rest of my family, but I loved it. <laughs> I uh, It started with drawing, started with step by step. Uh, then my parents are the ones that actually told me about uh, this school in which they taught animation. Uh, I was so surprised to know that it existed. I mean, uh, for kids, uh, I, I guess there's a distance from uh, a kid's look at uh, cartoons uh, to believing that they were made by people. There's people creating that life that we watch as kids on TV. Uh, when I learned that there was a school in Lisbon, Portugal, uh, called Etic that taught animation, I went crazy. There's nothing that I wanted more. Um, I think you're muted right now. I, oh, yeah, that's no, good. Oh, I'm sorry. From, uh, from the part that you found out there was a, a school in Lisbon that taught animation... Yeah, continue from that. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, when I found out that uh, there was a school that taught animation in Lisbon, in Portugal, called Etic, uh, there's nothing that I wanted more than that. Uh, from then on, I uh, I blocked out every other option. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make cartoons. So I started uh, with secondary uh, school in Lisbon. So it was three years of a special uh, specialized in a specialized course for animators uh, in the. Since I got uh, I got very good results, uh, I uh, I made my I directed my for, I co-directed my first film in the end of those three years, and uh, that earned me uh, a ticket, <laughs> if I may say so like this, uh, into uh, uh, the program Leonardo da Vinci, which meant that I got uh, I'm lacking the word right now I get I, I got uh, financial uh, support to for a training scholarship uh, abroad, uh, in England in this case. Uh, from then on, I found out about other schools uh, in England, uh, and I decided to continue my uh, my uh, my uh, my school development, in, uh, my learning development uh, in a university for uh, animation as well. I went. I then uh, entered a professional course of animation in the Arts University College at Bournemouth in England, and I did another three years uh, in which I uh, I uh, I'm sorry, I'm liking uh, the words. Uh, sometimes I like the words. Uh, it's in which fine. I I, uh, I uh, invested on a more profound learning of uh, animation and how to direct a film from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. And in your bio, it says uh, freelance illustrator. Oh, by the way, just one quick thing about animation. What, what was the first software you used for animation? The first software I used for animation was called CTP Pro. It was... It was a software that allowed me to digitalize uh, my drawings and uh, play them in a sequence. The first time I animated was uh, the very traditional way. Uh, nowadays, everyone does it on computer, and there are softwares that allow you to draw directly, uh, which is what I do today. But uh, we actually did it on paper not that long ago. So, like 15 years ago, I was drawing on paper and digitalizing each drawing at the time uh, so that I could play them all together in CTP Pro. That was the first software. I'm currently using uh, Toon Boom and Photoshop and uh, TV Paint and uh, other softwares that do it almost automatically. I just need a screen in which I can draw directly and voila, there's no more paper. <laughs> yeah, and next question is, in your bio it says freelance illustrator and about that, could you tell us about your experience working as a freelance? And what tips and advice would you give in general for people who are interested in working, you know, freelance? I do... I've done freelancing ever since I finished university. I guess I wanted to explore the illustration uh, work also. Um, 
there's one thing about me that uh, makes a difference uh, in my um, in my life as an artist. I'm constantly drawing. Uh, I work on my own projects, and uh, what I said before about uh, always wanting to try different things, that fits very well when it comes to illustration because uh, each book is a different personality, a different story, a different style, and I can play a lot with that. Uh, they've usually given me the opportunity to explore different styles on my at my own uh, pace and uh, likeness. So uh, when I started illustrating, I had already uh, thought about the idea that uh, illustration gave me the opportunity to try on many different things. Uh, it was also uh, another way to invest uh, in my own life. Uh, I mean, having work in different uh, editorials uh, would always be useful for my CV. Mm-hmm. So uh, I did it as uh, an investment and as an opportunity to explore different styles. So if I were to advise uh, young animators or illustrators, uh, the first thing would be to take a step forward and uh, take initiative to contact people. Don't be afraid of... uh, don't be afraid of uh, it being difficult or uh, people being distant or thinking that you're not good enough. Uh, there's a lot of investment to be done in one's portfolio and uh, that's the first step to um, giving out uh, your view and your your own style that's different from everything else. And from then on, getting jobs as an illustrator will only make it more dynamic it will help you search for what you really want to do maybe it won't be the first book that you want to uh, carry on maybe it will be the second book that will bring a new opportunity of a different style that you want to develop even further later so i guess uh, illustrating in the freelance is an opportunity to do different things uh, at a different pace and also fill in the blanks in between productions uh, there won't always be films uh, there won't always be uh, projects ending and starting uh, one month after the other uh, in an industry that works a lot with uh, short films there will be two or three months every once in a while in which you will have time to do your own thing so one uh, good idea would be to take that opportunity free time either to work on your own book or your own uh, personal projects or develop maybe your own future short film or uh, try illustration because it also gives you a feedback of uh, uh, not, not the audience but uh, readers uh, it can give you feedback on uh, what can be most interesting, more interesting to explore in terms of style, in terms of idea, which editorial can be more open to uh, maybe in the future publish your own work in case you want to publish your own book. So I guess it's a matter of opening doors. All right. And uh, what is the main subject of your artworks and what made them interesting to you? Um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> um, and the main subject of my artwork. When I have, um, I guess it's hard not to think about uh, the subject without thinking about what I want to say. Uh, I'm a cheerful person and uh, I like to laugh a lot, Uh, not to say uh, I don't have my moments, everyone has their moments, but uh, when it comes to expressing uh, what I feel, I like to explore sense of humor a lot, so uh, uh, that's where the book comes in. I mean, I can uh, talk about my life in a humorous way, Uh, even the problems can be funny if you know how to look at them that way, so I guess that project of a book, of my personal book called The Day at the Time, that gives me an opportunity to talk about myself in a positive way. So I guess uh, my personal life would be one big subject. (laughs) Uh, I like... There's one constant element. Not constant, but uh, it's very common to find tree houses on my... uh, 
on my uh, work, either illustrative or uh, when I'm uh, developing a, a personal project uh, in terms of a short film, sometimes I cannot avoid getting a treehouse somewhere in it. Also, uh, there are some specific elements that I guess illustrate a little bit of the magic of my imagination. I like the idea of a place where anything can happen. And I guess that treehouse came to be the symbol of it. I like to work the magical. I like the adventurous. I like the... I like that the books inspire me to live adventures. Uh, one thing that I liked representing a lot in my last animation is precisely that. How far can a book take you? I mean, it's one way of traveling without getting out of the couch. <laughs> not to say it's better than traveling outside the couch, not at all, but uh, it's one way of stimulating the imagination. So, sense of humor uh, is one constant element in my work most of the time and uh, the magic uh, the idea of anything can happen in your head it's another approach that I have when it comes to illustrating and uh, animating all right and um, actually uh, another thing I want to mention is I see like specifically two cats in some of your animations are there are there your cats <laughs> like do you have cats in real life and you're just bringing them in your works they're my cats yes <laughs> uh, they're Pikus and Farushka they, I actually use the real names <laughs> the only thing that uh, is true to life uh, in the in that comic uh, is uh, yeah, it's the cats uh, they're the only uh, characters that have the real names and uh, I use them a lot as uh, <laughs> as inspiration for my uh, comic books it's funny because they have very distinct personalities and I guess that's one way uh, to look at life when you're an animator or an illustrator uh, you at, you see personality everywhere and uh, Pikachu and Farushka have very distinct ways of being <laughs> and I wanted to use that in my comic books uh, they also allow me to have an extra voice uh, to talk about what I think without wanting to use it on the characters themselves so they're like uh, an outside point of view without getting off my head <laughs> without getting out of my head <laughs> So they do exist, yes. Uh, however, that book uh, is based on uh, mostly on events and not on actual characters. None of the characters is uh, completely true to life, only the cats. Uh, and even the cats are cartoons, so, so they're, obviously they don't uh, talk like that, don't think like that. <laughs> but um, that uh, book, it's more of a humorous way to represent uh, different points of view on issues that uh, are very common nowadays uh, among uh, well people my age uh, in their 30s uh, issues uh, as a couple issues as uh, in a family issues uh, as an individual uh, so I try to explore a little bit of what makes sense to me on or the way I see the issues that can be uh, seen and felt uh, in uh, so many other people All right, and next question is, what do you think about the statement? You have to be good at drawing to be good at illustration. Uh, being good at drawing is more than technique. And I guess uh, it's very important to distinguish these two things, these two aspects. Uh, a drawing can be technically good. Uh, or it can be strong and expressive in the still not respect uh, technicalities. Uh, I am uh, I teach at university and uh, there is uh, one thing that I try to uh, distinguish with my students uh, because uh, in animation uh, you need to understand. Uh, a three-dimensional three space in three-dimensional shapes in order to animate an object or a body uh, consistently. On the other hand, there can be a more artistic approach to shapes that doesn't follow a technically correct uh, 
the technically correct rules uh, and that can be very interesting as long as you know how to work on it also uh, curiously enough uh, I admire people who can uh, simplify shapes and uh, have a more abstract look to it and still make it so strong and expressive so uh, I, I'm not the one who's going to say that uh, it's better to be a good technical drawer than it, uh, a good uh, than a, a, an expressive painter or drawer also uh, the two things can go along and one can be more interesting than the other depending on the context and depending on the idea that you want to express All right, and um, what technologies and softwares do you mostly use for your artworks? I, for a long time, I didn't draw on paper because nowadays there are screens in which you can draw directly on, and I have at least three in my house. Uh, so it's been a while since I've used paper, although I think that it's never a good idea to leave it completely because uh, once you, uh, the more you draw, uh, the more used to, you get to shapes and the, the better the drawings come and more often they come properly, they come out properly then. Uh, but uh, being used to work on a computer can uh, also, if you don't draw very much, uh, it can be easy to get used to Control-Z, which means undoing uh, your mistakes. Uh, and it's always a good practice to get used to... Uh, Get it straight uh, right away on the paper. So I would advise people never to leave uh, paper completely. Uh, also, it's a very quick way to express your ideas uh, if you're not home. Uh, so always carry a sketchbook if you want to uh, develop quickly in your uh, in your art <laughs> and your technique uh, of drawing. Uh, nowadays, uh, I don't only work on paper. But I've been uh, recover. I've been uh, I've been coming back to that again. Uh, but I work uh, mainly on a Cintiq, uh, which I mean a Wacom Cintiq, which is my main uh, tool of work, uh, digital uh, screen in which I can draw directly. And the softwares I use, I usually Photoshop. Most of all, for illustration, is Photoshop. For animation, I've been using Photoshop also with the NMD uh, Extra to it, which me allows me to animate on Photoshop uh, properly. Uh, it's an uh, it's a nice tool. Uh, they, they've been developing uh, better and better uh, lately. So it's uh, I think Photoshop is becoming a uh, it's it's continuing to it's becoming a better and better uh, software to animate. Uh, apart from that, it's mainly Toonbone because that's what I'm currently using uh, at the studio I'm working on, which is Sardinia Lata in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, and I've had to work before in other projects in uh, TV Paint. Uh, it's another software that uh, has been very commonly used uh, in animation in, in on, on an international level. So I advise to uh, get, uh, if you want to animate, uh, if you want to try animation, uh, Toon Boom, TV Paint and Photoshop, I think are three of the softwares that are very most useful for an animator. Obviously, if you want to work, uh, you need to look at other softwares. If you're working on post-production and editing, like After Effects and the whole Adobe collection is very useful uh, to make a film. You can make a whole film either on TV Paint or in uh, using Adobe, the Adobe collection. So, yes, the, most of the softwares I use are... Are those three uh, TV Paint, Toon Boom, and uh, Adobe Photoshop? All right. And any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists? Yes, for an animation, um, the mo some of the most complete exercises that you can have to show that uh, to show your skills you know, as an animator are acting exercises, uh, I mean uh, having animated characters act and expressing emotions and uh, uh, talking as, as if they were feeling it uh, very strongly. Uh, so emotion and expression and movement, uh, the essence that makes uh, an object uh, come to life with personality, that's, uh, the, that's a key point uh, uh, of the job uh, of an animator. 
so I would say uh, that would be the first thing that I would uh, put on my uh, show reel if I want to get a job as an animator of characters. Uh, obviously, there are other uh, exercises that you can do to show your skills as uh, an animator uh, if you want to show how uh, you work on effects, for example. There are show reels that are only made of uh, visual effects. I mean, water, fire, wind, explosions. Uh, there's some animators uh, specialize on uh, effects and they work in movies only to work on the effects. Others uh, focus on uh, character animation, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, well, that's essential because uh, there are no, uh, almost no animation movies without characters. Uh, so, if you want to broaden your options, I think character animation is the main thing to go for in a show reel. So, acting uh, is essential. Uh, some effects are very useful, uh, especially if you. And uh, actually, um, there there cannot be. Uh, a showreel that doesn't show your knowledge on the principles of animation. There are 12 main principles of animation that are the base for uh, working on the movement and uh, exaggerating and explore it and create your own uh, version and uh, vision of what movement can be like. So uh, having as a base, having these principles has um, has the base for your work uh, uh, you you can have a very complete and strong portfolio uh, to show your skills. All right, and um, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What kind of project project is it? Of course, I mean if there's NDA involved, I mean of course you you, sh you you're feel free to is we can skip this question. Um, but if that's not the case, what are you working on right now? Um, right now I'm. Um, I, I think that's okay. I cannot, I cannot be too specific uh, about uh, the concept, uh, but uh, I'm working in a short film by two directors uh, at the Sardinia Lata. I mean, the studio I'm working on is Sardinia Lata. I'm working at is Sardinia Lata. Uh, and I'm working on a short film about uh, a little issue with the romance in between two main characters. So again, there's a lot of acting, there's a lot of emotional uh, content in it, and there's a lot of expression uh, so I guess I'm putting my very basic skills into work uh, with this uh, particular uh, job in film. Uh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. I, uh, this uh, studio I'm working on, I'm working at, is um, it has a lot of different uh, projects and a lot of different styles, uh, and uh, they're very good. They're one of the reasons why I wanted to work with them is that they have uh, all sorts of uh, styles. Uh, that gives me an opportunity to to try on uh, different things, and the um, animation process is very long. Uh, it, it can take five minutes of animation can take one month or five months. Uh, it can also take one year, depending on how complex it is. Uh, so if you if I'm working on a project that takes long, I'm glad to know that uh, another one will come right away afterwards. Uh, that's very different from what I was doing before, and that keeps me alive also. It's a very dynamic studio. All right. I mean, that's that's quite intense working on like a five or ten minute animation piece for a year or ten months. <laughs> that's got to be just... Oh my god, like, it's pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, well, five minutes can be as easily uh, very sketchy, uh, only black and white, and very quick, uh, quick animations, and uh, uh, little character animation, and mostly effects, which is also a little bit easier. Uh, or it can be five minutes of 100 characters dancing, very complex movements with a lot of colors, and a very very uh, clean line and uh, very controlled shapes and uh, complete music, background, uh, soundtrack. So you can imagine the possibilities. The characters are different. There can be so many of them, different details, different accessorizing. It's, it's insane, the, the, the difference that can go from uh, one film to another. <laughs> it changes a lot. It, it's very dynamic. <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends. Like, for example, you said dance moves. I, I guess if the movements are the kind of movements that when the artist imagine it doesn't have any real life reference, of course, it's going to take a while um, to even nail the reference down. But yeah, I mean, it basically depends a lot. Or because sometimes, I mean, of course, uh, you probably know that they recycle their animations, you know, in their new works, you know. 
like their the movement of the animations so they just you know change the clothes or the face and the colors yes uh, well there's no end to how complex it can be uh it's uh, uh, I can be a little bit more specific. Actually, uh, if you want to make quick movements, it's easier uh, to for slight uh, nuances on the shapes uh, to go unnoticed in case they're not perfect. But if you're working, for example, or very on a very sensual uh, sequence of uh, slow movements, uh, if you want to uh, work on a, on a romantic uh, slow moment in which uh, it's very important to notice the small rotation of the head towards uh, the other partner's neck uh, and the, the slow movement of the hand. Uh, there's a lot of synchronization that has to happen in all these movements. You need to worry about the rhythm of the movement of the head, the shape of the hand. Uh, well, it can be... So, it can vary so much. It's... Uh, I could give you so many examples of how complex and how simple it can be. It's, uh, it's insane. <laughs> it's very rich. It's a very rich uh, uh, art <laughs> animation is. Yeah. And, uh, well, the next question is uh, what area, beside the area you're working on right now, which is animation and illustration, are you interested to explore and learn in the future if you had the time? At the moment, I am uh, doing animation and uh, I am uh, developing uh, a little, uh, I wouldn't say business because that, uh, that, that would mean a lot of uh, complex uh, system. Uh, uh, um, right now I'm working as an animator uh, and I'm also developing uh, a project that uh, I would love to direct. So, uh, on the long term, uh, I would really like to be a director and uh, have my own film speak for my vision of a particular matter in life. So, aside from animation, uh, I want to direct a film. I like illustrating uh, and I have another passion, which is uh, teaching. Uh, I teach at a university in Faro, Portugal. And uh, well, there's nothing like... Uh, seeing the enthusiasm of someone who liked, likes animation as much as I do and learning what they can do with it, uh, learning how far they can go. Uh, in If I have a, a class of 30 students and uh, two of them are really interested in developing their skills uh, in a very clear way, that's already enough to make me so happy. So uh, I guess that would be, uh, that's something else that I don't want to stop doing. Uh, animation, directing one day, illustration will always be part of it. So. And uh, teaching uh, is one thing that I never want to do. I would love to try and sculpt, but unfortunately there are only 24 hours a day and <laughs> there's, not enough, there's not enough time to do everything that one wants in life. There's just so much to do. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, and uh, with everything that's been said and done, to conclude everything we discussed in this episode, give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skill set when it comes to illustration and animation, like every step, where to start, best tools, softwares, anything. Well, if I were to advise someone to start a career in animation, uh, I would definitely uh, advise them to go to school. Uh, it, it, there's, uh, there's a lot of self-learning. Uh, and there's also schools online that can uh, be very efficient in uh, teaching you the skills uh, to become a good animator. Uh, but there's one thing that uh, you won't get just in school, uh, which is drawing. Uh, we should, we must Drawing is not like riding a bike. That's something I learned very early. Uh, you can forget how to draw. You can le you can stop having the skills to find the right shape or uh, uh, get rusty when trying to get the essence on paper. Uh, so drawing is definitely a main task that should be behind the work of any animator throughout life, not just in the beginning. But I'll definitely start with that. So draw a lot and draw from life. Uh, trying to get the essence of the movement and expression in things that you cannot control 
uh, like for example people on the train or people in a cafe or in a the park they won't stop for you to draw them so uh, getting used to get the essence of the movement in a f- just a few lines is the first step to catching what's the very essence of uh, life in an object or in a body um, so uh, drawing all the time uh, life drawing uh, is very important uh, finding a school that will give you structure uh, because there is a process that must be followed if you're trying, if you, if you want to start in animation. Like for example, you want, you don't want to start adding uh, too many drawings if the basic movement isn't there in just the five first drawings. So uh, it can be easy to uh, forget this process and start uh, getting ahead of yourself. So uh, I would always advise to get some structure, and you can find that in schools, either uh, online or physical schools, or. Uh, present uh, present I, uh, well presential uh, teaching uh, there are softwares that you can find uh, that are free also uh, I'm sorry I cannot remember the names right away I'm not sure Krita is uh, free right now uh, but there are animation softwares that you can find uh, that are free and uh, you can start exploring uh, your own uh, ideas uh, there they're very intuitive they're easy to to learn and to they have the basic tools for you to start creating movements on your own uh, and there are also a few books that you can find actually there's a lot of books uh, a lot of books on uh, how to animate how to start animating how to develop a short film for example how to, how to develop your ideas and even books that you can actually i'll, I'll give you an example um the Survival's Kit for Animators by Richard Williams. Uh, that's uh, one book that uh, in some places and in some circles it's seen like a bible of the animation because it has all the uh, the basics that you can uh, start uh, working on if you want to explore uh, what animation is and what being animator, uh, an animator is. Uh, and there are also art books. Uh, that's actually something that uh, I advise to my students a lot. Uh, do research on different styles. I like anime, um, but uh, there is so much more than that. And uh, depending on the country, uh, depending uh, on uh, well uh, the references that you get, depending on the tools that you use uh, to either YouTube or Netflix, uh, you'll find a lot of anime. And I guess that's one thing that's sometimes it's what you get the most uh, it's the most common reference that you can find but uh, it's totally worth checking out other options in different uh, styles and different artists and one thing that uh, you can find in animation festivals for example that you cannot find just in any uh, bookstore are books uh, that uh, contain their art development uh, their own concepts their own sketches their own ideas uh, so that would be also a good way to explore what's out there um, books that uh, are basically portfolios of artists and that are so rich in ideas and styles that uh, well they can give you a lot of um, inspiration All right, I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, where can people find you if they want to get in contact? Uh, well, uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram uh, right now. Or you can find me as uh, Sara Napsh, or you can search directly uh, in my or through my uh, email, uh, which is Sara Napsh Souza. Um, it's also a way to find me on Instagram. Um, I have two blogs, but a little bit of, a little bit out of date, so uh, I, I, I wouldn't mention them. But I'm uh, creating a website in which I'll have uh, most of my work. Uh, so uh, when I have it uh, finished, I will definitely post it on Instagram, so you can see the rest of my work. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day. Goodbye, everyone. Take care. Thank see you, you very next much. episode. Thank you, Bye.